there are all sorts of reactions in biological systems that are energetically favorable, but they're still not going to happen quickly or even happen on their own. And the phosphorylation of glucose is an example of that. And we go into some detail into that on the video on coupled reactions. And I think we actually call that the phosphorylation of glucose 6-phosphate. But it's super important because by putting the phosphate group on a glucose, it's ready to be the input to a whole series of biological uh, mechanisms. It allows the glucose to be tagged, so it's going to be hard for it to escape the cell again. And it's a fairly, stri it's a fairly straightforward mechanism where you have where you have a lone pair of electrons on this, on this hydroxyl group right over here. And then it attempts to, if it's in the right configuration, it can form a bond with the phosphorus in the phosphate group. Now the reason why it doesn't happen on its own, even though it's energetically favorable, once you form the bond, you have electrons that are going to be able to go into a lower energy state. So it has a negative delta G. If this is if this is the molecules before the reaction, this is how much free energy they have before the reaction. After the reaction, they have less free energy. They have, they have been able to release energy. So this is something that we would consider to be spontaneous. But for the reaction to happen, you need a little bit of energy to be put into the system. We call this our activation energy. And you might say, well, why, why is that? Well, we have electrons that want to form a bond with this phosphorus, but this phosphorus is surrounded by negative charges. This oxygen right over here has a negative charge. This oxygen right over here has a negative charge. And as you can imagine, electrons don't like being around other electrons. Like charges repel each other. So in order for this reaction to occur, or, or for it to occur more frequently, it has to be catalyzed. A, a catalyst is anything that makes a reaction happen faster or even allows the reaction to happen at all. And when we talk about catalysts in biological systems, we're typically talking about, we're typically talking about enzymes. Enzymes. And the way that an enzyme might catalyze this reaction, we actually talk about it when we talk about coupled, coupled reactions, is well, maybe it can provide some positive charges it can provide some positive charges around these negative charges to pull them further away to create space to create space so that you can actually have the reaction proceed and so what an enzyme would do it would make this curve instead of having this hump on it the curve would look more like this so that the reaction can just proceed but what are these enzymes these things that can you know maybe it could, it could place some interesting charge that can allow the, cat, the reaction to happen a certain way. It might bend the molecules in a certain way to, to expose some bonds. It might uh, have a, a more acidic or basic environment that might be more, more favorable for the reaction. What are these seemingly magical things? Well, at a very high level, they tend to be these protein complexes, plus or minus a few other things. So, you can view them as proteins, and you know maybe sometimes there'll be multiple um, you know, polypeptide chains put together. They might have some other ions associated with them, but for the most part, they are proteins. And the the molecules that are going to react, that are going to bind to the proteins, we call these the substrates. So these, and this reaction right over here, the glucose and the ATP, these are going to be the substrates. So you can imagine. You can imagine the enzyme that does this, and the general term for the enzyme that helps that helps phosphorylate a a sugar molecule like this. We call it a hexokinase. So it might be this crazy looking protein. We're gonna this crazy looking protein. We're gonna take better looks at this in a few moments. But the ATP, the ATP might bind to it right over there. ATP is one of the si substrates, and then the glucose might bound might bind to it right over there. And so this two su sub, the two substrates bind, and the area where all of this is going on, we call that the active site. So the active site, because that's where all the action is. The active site. And often when you have the substrates bind, they are able to interact with the protein to make the fit even stronger, to, to make it even more, more um, more suitable for the reaction to take place. And so the whole, the whole protein might bend a little bit to kind of lock these two in place a little bit more, and we call that induced fit. Induced, induced fit. 
And so where would these positive charges come from? Well, these would be things that are the side chains of the different amino acids on the actual, on the, the polypeptide chain, on the protein. And it could even be other ions that get involved. In fact, in particular, if to, to facilitate the phosphorylation of glucose, a magnesium ion might be involved. to help draw some positive charge away. But there's other, there's other positively charged groups that help draw charge away so that the reaction is more likely to occur. So that's what enzymes are. And they tend to be optimally working in certain pH environments or at certain temperatures. In general, uh, the higher temperatures allow more interactions. Things are bumping around more. But if, if temperatures get a little bit too high, the protein or the enzyme might stop working. It might denature. It might lose its actual, it might lose its actual structure. And what I want to now give you an appreciation for is how beautiful and complex these structures are. And you should appreciate what I'm showing you. These are in your cells. These are in, in your, in your in, you know, look at your hand. Look at you know, everything around you. There, there's, there's a lot of this stuff going on inside of you. So hopefully it gives an appreciation for the complexity of you as a biological system, but frankly, all biological systems. So this right over here, this is a visualization of a hexokinase, one ver variety of it. And just to get a sense of scale, This is a glucose molecule, and this right over here is an ATP. And so they will bind. These are the two substrates. They will bind at the active site. You might have the induced fit where this fits around it. It draws some charge away. It might bend the molecules in a certain way so that, so that they're more likely to interact, bring these things close together. And so you're going to have the reaction occur. And then once the reaction occurs, they're not going to want to bind to the substrates anymore. I guess you could say the products at that point. And then they're going to let go of them. And then the enzyme hasn't changed. And that's an important property of an enzyme. It's not like it just has one use and it goes away. It can keep doing this over and over and over again. One, en one enzyme will do this many, 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 many times. in its actual life. And so now what I want to show you is a little uh, three-dimensional visualization that I got from a website. So let me go get that. So I'd pause my recording so I could get this, this little uh, simulation or this model. And this is actually a hexokinase as well. And hexokinase has come into in a bunch of uh, different varieties. But this is a pretty neat thing to look at. And this has been visualized differently. When you look up protein images on the web or anywhere, you'll see them sometimes with these ball and stick models. Sometimes you'll see them in these space filling models. Sometimes you'll see them with this kind of, where you see the various structures. You notice, you, you, you notice the alpha helices here that we studied when we talked about protein. structures, and you can also see some beta sheets. But this gives you an appreciation of the binding sites and how these things might interact. This right over here, that is, in, that is a molecule of ATP. And then right next to it, I believe, if I'm looking at that right, that is a molecule of glucose. And notice they have bound. They're, they're, they are the two substrates. They have bound at the active site. And now they can interact with each other. The, the enzyme, the hexokinase in this case, can help facilitate the reaction that we care about, the phosphorylation of glucose. So hopefully images like this and like this give you an appreciation for how complex and how beautiful these things actually are.